the containers of C++. A container of C++ is essentially a set, a mathematical set that you have elements in it. So it's an array type of a thing. I cannot call it an array because it's not an array. It's actually a set of things. And the way you access the elements inside the array dictates what type of a container you have. And that's what we call a container. Um, we're going to go through it and see exactly how it is. Um, these you got to read it yourself and we're going to go to the containers and I'm going to pause right over here. So I can go through different containers one by one and tell you what the syntax is and how they work, but I'd rather do something else instead, okay? Show you uh, something that you're going to study in data structures. Um, a little piece of code that you're going to actually study in data structure and see how, you, how it's designed. Um, so from there, then, we can actually understand how these things work. Uh, we have different types of containers that you have already dealt with. We uh, have containers like arrays, which means uh, uh, you can create an array of something. And when you create that thing, when you create that array of something for yourself, it's essentially a piece of memory somewhere like this. Essentially, when it's in the memory, and when you look at it, if you have the address of this element, you can simply find the address of the next one just by knowing what is the size of what el one element. And these are sequential stuff in memory. When you have such a thing, if you want to resize it, if you want to actually manage it and resize it and change, let's say I want to double the size of this one. If I want to double the size of this one, I cannot just expand this one. I have to actually have another contiguous piece of memory twice the size of that one. So I should have something like this that is two, so the, the twice the size of that one. Sorry, I want to say it's contiguous. That's why I did it like this. So it's like that in memory. Sorry, my memory is wa warped. I don't have enough space over there. Then you copy every single element into here, and then you have the rest added to it as a, as a second part of the, the array. So if you have 20 elements and you want to resize it to 21, okay, you need to have a total amount of 41 uh, units of memory because you have to have 21 more, copy the whole 21 over there, then remove the first one. You cannot just add one element. It's impossible. If you are dealing with humongous amount of data, surprisingly, and if you have a continuous memory, you have a big chunk of memory available, this is a good solution, actually. It's very quick. If you want to go halfway through your list, you just calculate the address, and you jump right at it. So it's pretty efficient. But if I want to manipulate this over and over and over, then it becomes a pain, especially if I want to add one thing in the middle. Resizing like this is fine. But if I have an array like this, so if I have series of stuff like this, and I want to, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Now if I want to insert one thing over here, what do I have to do? I have to resize again. Because I cannot just insert something in the middle. So I need lots of memory to do this. So this is, although it's always kind of a trade-off between the amount of memory and speed, okay? If you have big chunk of memory, you can do stuff and they're fast. If you have a small amount of memory, you can still do stuff, but instead of using the memory, you have to use your brain. Because of that, it takes more time, okay? How? How do I find out in an array where an when element n is? 
I start from the beginning and go n minus 1 times forward, and I get to that element, correct? Everybody's clear about this, right? So I have an address and I go. But if I want to have stuff added halfway through, that's not a solution. Better solution is to make each element a smart element, not a dumb element like a sequential array. A sequential array is essentially you guys standing in Tim Hortons waiting for the coffee. Nobody needs to think where I am. You just see the person in front of you, and when your turn is up, you get your coffee. But if I put you, like, if, I, if, the, if the, you actually are all same in a room, not in, a, in order, and they are all in a room, and somebody's over there serving coffee, then you need to remember how many people, or who is the next person after you. So when you come in, it says, uh, I'm after whom? The guy says, that. And that's the only thing you need to know. The rest will follow because he knows who's X, he knows who's next, he knows so. What happens is that, for example, let me just explain it to you. Uh, that's not going to be in the video because I cannot turn that camera towards myself. But let's say, let's say, I am the first person who wants to get coffee, okay? She's got to be next. Can you, and this is going to be a little tiresome for your hand. My apologies, but hey, could you please point at me? Okay, right? So she's pointing at me. She knows that I am next, right? Okay, could you please point at her? Now, nicely, so everybody can see. Okay, so you, can, you know you can use the other hand too, right? Okay, there you go. Okay, good. good. So now, now we are three people in line, and we are not really in line, correct? Uh, could you please point at her? There you go. Now, if we are selling coffee over here and I'm the first person, we don't need to know who's where. Because as soon as I'm gone, she has her eye on me. As soon as I get my coffee, she gets her coffee. He doesn't care. He's just looking at her. When she gets her half coffee, the next person is her, him. Why? Because each element of this array is a smart one. Now, could you please point at me? He just changed his mind. He, she doesn't want coffee anymore. She's out. And as you see, I did not need to reallocate, resize anything. You follow? Could you please point at her? Could you please point at him? Now, he just cut it into the line. He became the third person. He was the third person. Now he is the third person. And I did not resize anything. Nobody moved from their seats. No resizing were happened. Why? Thank you. Because we all, as elements, know who is the next person. OK? Ironically, one of the most important data structures that we have in computer science is the most unfair kind of lineup, which means the person who comes in last will be served first. The person who comes in first will be served last. Ironically, this is called a stack. If you are three people in a house, and you always wash your dishes timely, you don't let it pile up, and you have 12 plates, it's likely that the 11th and 12th plates are never touched. Because you always pick the first three, you wash it and you put back on, right? So always the last plate that is put on a stack of plates is the first one that comes out. And that's what it is. So essentially, I push the black marker over here in the stack, OK. So essentially, I push the black marker into a stack. Then I push the red marker into a stack. Then I push the green marker into a stack. Then I push the blue marker into a stack. If I want to pick one, can I pick the red one? No. It's stuck here. Which one I have to pick first? Blue one. So the one that I pushed first will be popped last. So every pop that I do, the one at the top comes up. And the one at the top comes up. And the one at the top comes up until it's empty. I don't have anything else. Let's design that. Let's do it. We're going to write the code for, of something that actually does that. OK? How do we do it? So to start, I need to keep track of where all these things are. Each element of a non-sequential data structure, they call it a node. 
okay? Why it's called a note, we don't care. It's called a note, just accept it, okay? I'll explain that to you later. But, so essentially, if I have a stack that is empty, so we, we are object-oriented people now, so we are assuming that stack is actually an entity, right? And stack can hold lots of elements. What is the name of each element? What do we call an element? What do we call an element of a stack? A node, we just mentioned, right? Okay, so each element of a stack of this array is actually called a node, okay? So if I want to keep track of the nodes, I need node pointers, correct? But do I need to know where all the nodes are? No, I just need to know who's at the top, correct? So my stack actually looks like something like this. So this is my stack. And I have over here a node pointer, and I call it top. And what is an empty stack? An empty stack is a stack that the top pointer is pointing to nothing. It's null. Done. I just designed a stack that is empty. Are we okay with this? Now, if I want to have one element added, I want to push the black marker into it, what do I do? I have to create a node. What a node look like? A node has two parts. One part holds the data. So I create, first of all, let me create the second stack. So that's an empty stack. And this is another stack that is not supposed to be empty and supposed to be, actually, I'm having the colors wrong. Ugh, black goes. Sorry, there we go. So that's my empty stack, right? I create a node. What is a node? How do I create a node? Your node needs to have two parts. One part is the data. That is the color of the marker, which in this case is black, right? Black marker. So that's my data. What is the next thing that I want? A pointer to the next point, to the next thing. Remember, we were pointing at each other? So that's, that's going to be this one, OK? And I'm going to make the top to point to this pointer, to this node. And the next one of this one is nothing. Now I just inserted the black marker. Now if I want to insert the blue marker, I create another node. So this is blue. And the next of black will point to blue. And blue's next will point to null. I just pushed another one in. OK? And it keeps going like that. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. my mistake, my mistake. I was just teaching Q. My apologies, not that. Wipe that, erase that from your memory. I'm going to wipe that from the, from the video. <laughs> I'm going to edit the video and take that out. One more time. So I just push the black, and black is at the top. Now I want to do blue. So I'm going to make the blue over here, add the blue. OK? And when I add the blue, I'm going to tell you, because it's a stack, I was doing Q by mistake, but anyways. So when I push this one in, this is going to be the new one that is at top, right? So immediately, I'm going to copy the top in here, which means this is going to point to this one. And I'm going to update the top to point, to point to what I just added. Essentially, this will be gone. So blue becomes the new top. OK? Now I want to push the red in. If I want to push the red in, I'm going to, anywhere I'm going to create a red node, I'm going to put over here red, OK? And red's going to copy top. Top is pointing to that one, so red is going to point exactly where top is pointing. And then I'm going to update the top to the newly added, added thing, and it's going to go there, so this is going to be gone. Now I want to add the green one. I add the green one, and top is going to get copied into this one, so that green one is going to point to here. And I'm going to update the top to point to the green. Mess, right? 
It is a mess in memory, but it is a mess. They are everywhere. This is a, wherever you have free memory, that's where these things are allocating in memory. All of these things are dynamic, dynamically allocated one by one. Now, if you want to pop, what are you popping? The one that top is pointing at, right? So green is going to get top, popped. But where is the next one? It is in the next of green, correct? So I'm going to make top to after I popped green, after I popped green, after I popped green, I'm going to say, hey, top, you should now point to where green's next is pointing. Where is green's next pointing? Red, correct? So it's going to actually point to red. All right? And this connection is, oh, before doing that, I delete that, make sure it's not gone. It's all gone. It's gone. And I keep doing that. Every single time I want to pop, I pop the data, I update it, then I delete the old one. I pop the data, I update it, and I delete the old one, and it's all gone. So a stack works like this. And it doesn't have to get resized. If I have 50,000 elements, I'll add one, just one will be added, and nothing more. It's as easy and simple as that. And how do we do it? So, but when you are actually writing it, I'm going to, uh, two seconds. When you are actually writing it, actually write it in order. I know, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. when it doesn't say pause, it means it's recording. That's it. I'm not using the, I'm using the camera just for the screen. The screen is being recorded. So, <laughs> okay, but well, thank you for noticing. All right, so what happens over here is this. If you are actually drawing this to understand how it works, put it in order for your brain not to get too confused. Okay, so essentially a stack is this. So you have top. And the last one is pointing to null. As simple as that. That's the stack. And your stack, that is this one, has only access to the top element. Whereas the next one, it doesn't care. Whenever it wants to point to next one, it will destroy this and go to next one. A standard stack, you are not capable of seeing what is the next one. Every single time, you are calling a function in your program, the address of where the function call is happening is pushed into a stack. So imagine, every time you are actually calling a function, where that function call is, the address is pushed into a stack. And the return statement in your function is a pop from that stack. So it knows where to go back to. Otherwise, function calls would have been impossible. Every time you call a function, the address that you wrote the function to call, that address goes into a stack, and the, and the execution goes to the function. The function keeps running, 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 running. As soon as it reaches to return, it pops the address out of the stack, and it jumps back into the, to the place that it came from. That's how it remembers where to return to. And because all the functions are called in sequence, every single time a function is called, a new address is pushed. When does the last address pops? When your main ends. So essentially, when main is called, the first address is in there. When the last one is out, it means the program execution is gone. OK? So just as I told you, like one of the most popular and used data structures is the stack. And when you hear it says stack overflow and it crashes your program, it means you had too many function calls. So many function calls that the stack that holds the memory for your function calls are full. You ran out of memory. So stack overflow is actually that. Now you know. OK, yes. <laughs> what you mean? This is not like you're not writing programming universe. It's a computer with limited amount of memory. Yeah, but you're actually creating new memories. You don't create a new memory. Yes, you're creating new memories. But this stack is using memory in your RAM. When your RAM is full, you don't have any space anymore. 
It crashes. <coughs> no, that's what I'm saying. When you try that, go at home, write a function, inside the function, call the function again. And see what happens. Or call a function, call function one, uh, write function one, call function two, inside function two, call function one. Okay? You, these, these things happen sometimes. You don't notice it, that you actually you call a function that is called in a, and then it be, goes into a kind of a causality loop. It keeps calling itself, 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 and the poof, it goes up. Okay? Pardon me? Did I teach stack in this class? Am I that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mar I did it with the mark. I, I don't think I actually drew that. You did? Okay, good. So now I'm good. So now I'm going to actually implement it. Did I implement the stack? Did I actually write a program for you stack? No, good. Okay. All right. Phew. Man, I was I was getting worried. I, sh I thought I, I have to go visit my doctor. All right. So stack. Let's put it in here. <coughs> Don't worry, this is the last thing that I'm going to write today. And this is like, I just want you to see what's going on. The next code I have already written, I'm going to give it to you to go home and kill yourself with it, OK? So the, the, this is the easy The stack that is the most used uh, data structure in your computer almost, OK? It's the easiest to write, OK? That's lucky, all right? And especially when I have the code ready in the other one, it's much easier to do so. <laughs> Okay, so first thing first, let's have the usual suspects up there because I want to test it. I want to make sure that we have it over here. We have these things, so that's that one. Now, first I have to, is there anything I have? Is, are, you, are we okay? Are we okay? All right. I have to pause it. All right, so chicken or the egg? Which one do we create? Should I create the stack first or the node? These are two different classes, right? What should I create first? If I create the stack, then what happens to the node? If I create, OK, let's do it. Let's do a bottom top design, which means I'm going to first create the details and I'm going to the, create the master. So first, we're going to create a node. So we're going to have a class node, right? And what do I have in this node? As usual, when you create a, a data structure and you want things to be easy, you just use your data as an integer. I'm not going to put an, an employee in my stack right now, OK? I'm going to put uh, something that is uh, easy to manage. So I'm going to say over here, data. And then I need to have the second part of the, point, the, the node over here. Node is the small thing. Remember that? So I need to have a pointer to another node, which is easy. I'm going to say node, pointer. Uh, and I'm going to call it next, okay? And let's make that one null PTR by default because anytime I'm creating a node, as you saw over here, uh, uh, it has to get created, initialized, and then I'm going to add it to uh, uh, update it to whatever I want. So it's good to have the default value set. Um, I'm going to create a constructor for it, just a, an easy thing. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So. What I will do is essentially something like this. I'm going to create a constructor uh, that gets the data and gets the next and set it. And I'm going to set the default to null pointer. I'm not sure if this is right. Go home and make it efficient. Maybe that thing doesn't need to have a default value. I just did it, and I didn't even think about it. It worked, and I brought it in. This is not the most efficient thing. There might be lots of bad things in here that you can make it more efficient. That's one of the things that you need to do. Go home, walk through it, try to see if it, OK? Now, and that's all I need for the node. Why? This is where we come to the concept of friendship. Remember what I told you what the friendship is good for? Knife in the back, remember that? Or the second one was ownership. I said, friends are only good for ownership. Does anyone else have access to a node than stack? 
No. When you are pushing, when I'm pushing the marker into the stack, I'm pushing a black marker. There is no pointer to another black marker. Nobody knows that there is a pointer to another marker in here. All they insert into a stack is the data. They are not aware of the existence of the pointer. Therefore, that's what I'm going to do. That node of mine is fully private. It doesn't have any members. It doesn't have any public thing. And what I'm going to do in here is to make the stack its friend. So I'm going to say friend class stack. Problem is that I haven't implemented the stack yet. I'm going to get an error. It's going to say, what stack? Because of this fact, I have to do forward declaration, class stack. And as long as in this code, I am not instantiating the stack, I'm good. If I instantiate the stack, call is constructed, then it's going to be in trouble because it doesn't know how. But if I only want to say it's a stack, I'm good. Then what I need to do, I need to actually create the class stack. And as you saw, class stack is nothing but a node pointer, correct? The class stack is nothing but a node pointer. That is actually the top one, right? That's the top. Are we okay with this? Now, let's call it M top. This one needs to have a public thing. Stacks are created by default empty. So when I create a stack, there is nothing in it. Therefore, I don't even need a constructor for this. Because of C++ 17, I can initialize my values in class, right? So I don't need a default constructor. That top is going to be null when it's created. So no constructor for this class, right? I create a stack, it's going to be empty, and that's going to be null. Now, what I need to do is to push data into it, right? How do I push data? When I push data, uh, I don't need, do I need to return anything? No, I'm pushing. I have to give it something, right? Whenever I do not want to return anything, it's my habit. When I don't need to return anything, I always return reference of the current object to make the function reusable. OK? You'll see what I mean. That question mark that came up, I'll tell you what it means. So anytime, I usually don't like void point, void returning void. So it's a waste of possibilities, right? So now in here, I'm going to say stack. Reference, push, and I'm going to pass data into it. Correct? <clears throat> so what do I need to do? I need to create a new node in here, as we did over there. Correct? So step one was to create a new node. Step one was to create a new node. Correct? and put the data in it, correct? Step two was to make that one point where top is pointing, correct? That's step two, to make this one point to the top, correct? And step three was to update top to point to the new one, and a new, one, new node is added, correct? So <clears throat> let's see if we can do it over here and how many statements I need to do that. So I need to create a new node. I'll do it. New uh, node. I can do that because I'm the friend of the class. I have access to its property. So new node. Why do I, what do I pass to the node? The data. So that sets the data, right? What should be the next? The top address, right? So I'm going to pass that one to the constructor too. Perfect. So step one and two is done. Step three is to make top to point to this new one, correct? There you go. This is step three. Done. Push is done. Finished. Very simple, right? Are we okay with this? Why everybody's question mark? I just did that. This, any, anything over here didn't, doesn't make sense that you have a question for? 
Don't say, why, in, only, why is it that easy? It is that easy. Data structure is usually like that. When you hopefully take the subject, you'll see. They are very small. Like you write five lines of code that does something that blows your mind away. That's why it's data structure. That's why it's called algorithms, OK? Because they are cool stuff. They are logical stuff that you do that they accomplish a lot, OK? Are we OK with this? OK? Now the next thing I want to do. So I did push into it. Uh, I need to, to know if the stack is empty or not, right? So I'm going to make it easy. So I'm going to say if the stack is ever checked for truth or falsehood, I'm going to return true if the stack is not empty. And if it returns false, it means stack is empty. How do I do that? That's very easy. I'm going to say operator bool. And I'm going to make it a constant because I don't want to change anything. So it should, operator, it should return true if stack has something, correct? So I essentially need, need to return if top is not equal to null PTR, correct? Right? So that's to tell me if it's uh, good or not. Um, now if I want to pop anything, or if I want to take something out of it, what do I do? I need to return what I'm, what is at the top, right? So that's the data. That's the integer. <clears throat> it's called pop. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, so int, but that's the value, or uh, let's call it data. And I'm going to return that data. So all I need to do is to set that data to whatever I want to get. Where is that data? Where is the data that I want to pop? You literally, let me just show it to you over here. You literally write what you drew over there. You see this top arrow? You see that? You literally write that. So you write data is set to top that points to M data. Oh, sorry, M top. You literally write, remember I told you whenever you do dy dynamic memory, you have to draw it? That's why. You, that's exactly, you see, top that is pointing the data, that's exactly why. So I just extracted the data, correct? Right? Now, now I need to, now I can return it and be done with it. But before doing that, I have to do this, which is essentially, I have to make the top point to the next one, correct? To get rid of that. So I have to do the blue arrow, correct? But if I do that, if I actually say top is equal to to tops next, which is essentially this one, then I'm going to lose this. I won't be able to delete it anymore, correct? So what do I do? <clears throat> what do I do? I'm going to say node pointer to delete is top, which means the one that is pointing at right now, I got to delete. Correct? 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 All right. I got to delete the red one. So, uh, so that's what I'm going to point at. Now, the next thing I need to do over here is to do all the update that I was talking about. So the top that I have right now should be tops next, correct? Take a look at it. What is tops next? This is tops next, right? Where is it pointing to? Right? So when I say top is set to top next, so I'm putting this value inside top, therefore this happens. And don't forget that I have to delete already pointing here. So I'm not going to lose it. So what happens is that after statement 25, and I don't know why am I getting, oh, I put that over there. Nobody says anything. That's not data. That's next. OK, thank you. Data? Anyways, next. OK, so yeah, so it becomes next. Now, if I actually update what happened over here, this will be gone. That is still pointing over there, but who cares? 
right? The next is still pointing there, but I don't care. I have access to to delete, correct? I should get rid of it. So now what I'm going to do is to say delete to delete. Do I have, how do I write it? To delete, yeah. And that's it. Done. What? You don't want the data? Why did you push it in then? You just pushed the you just pushed the black marker in. I gave you the black marker. He said, "Why you are giving me the black marker? You just popped it. You want the black marker? I popped it for you. You don't want it? <laughs> I don't know how to reply to that, my friend. The whole objective of what we are doing is to putting some data in a container and get it in reverse order. Now I'm giving you the data that we pushed over there. You say, why you are giving it to me? So you can do whatever you like to do with it. <laughs> All right? Okay. Are we okay with this? So that's pop. And the only thing I need to do over here is to write a destructor in case the stack is not empty and it goes out of the scope. So I, I pushed 50 in, I popped five, and I didn't need the rest. How do I exit? Then I write a destructor. The destructor will be stack. Okay, I can actually start, I can actually say over here while top is not equal to null, one by one I can go to the next. Why do I do that? Uh, I have a thing that it's doing it, so I'm gonna say pop. Okay, but how? I'm gonna say while this which means while this thing is not empty, I wrote the code over here for it, right? Keep popping. So it's going to keep popping until it's empty. And that becomes a destructor. Easy breezy. Okay? Because it's returning that thing by value, that's a very inefficient code to write. But I want to teach, I don't want to write the most efficient code. Change that pop thingy to an actual deletion if you want to. Because it's returning the data by value, right? If that thing that I'm returning is a big class, then you know how much memory is going to be cost for copying the thing and returning it and destroying it. That's going to be a lot, right? So it would be nice if we don't do that. Anyway, so this is my stack. And now I can actually push stuff into it. So I can actually say over here, stack D. And I don't need that shaking thing at the right side. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to, now, remember that question mark in your face when I was returning this? See how I'm pushing this stuff over here, d.push, .push, .push, .push. That returning that, this allows that. If I didn't do that, then I had to do one by one. I had to actually write over here that one because it's void. Then I had to say d push again, then semicolon, then d push again, right? I didn't want to do that. I want to do push and push and push and push, and because of that, I return this. If it was void, I couldn't have done this. That just makes my life easier. All right? So now I'm going to say push these things in and then pop them out and show it. So it's going to push 50, 70, and 100. And when it's popping, it should be in reverse order. So essentially it means, oh, which one is yet? Project note. Build errors. Oh, my goodness. Push must return a value. Oh, my apologies. Return this. One more time. And it's going to return everything in reverse. So 100, 70, 50. Please go home and walk through this. OK? So if I want to actually look at the proper way of writing the stack, this would have been a better one. So. This is the exact same stack, but the difference is that I converted it to a template. The code is identical to the other one. Absolutely no difference. Take a look. You 
You see that? I have class stack. I have template T class stack. I have class node. I have template class node. I have node pointer. I have int data. I have T M data. I have node pointer M next. I have node pointer next, and I'm going to do it like this. Oh, yeah, node pointer is fine. Okay? And the, so everything's exact, exactly the same. I, I'm just adding the signature of template to, the, to it as I go. And this is my stack, the same way it's going through. Everything's exactly the same. No difference. What is this pop? Avoid, see, this warning is coming because of what I exactly told you. Take a look. Avoid unnamed objects with custom construction and destruction, which means you are returning an object and you're not getting it. You're not, why you are having something like this called? It's you're creating something and then leave it in a thin air. It's going to die immediately after. So that's a bad thing to do. Anyways, now if I take a look at this one, how this stack is called, I have to bring up another thing. So I had the opportunity to write a class for an employee. So I create the class employee. It has a, a dynamic name. It has a long employee number. And it has a constructor, copy constructor, move operator, move constructor, read and print and write. So essentially, I'm creating employees with this. OK? Very simple. You can take a look at the code for it, but you, it's nothing that you haven't done 50 times already. Everything's over here exactly as what you do for, a, uh, for uh, a, a small dynamic class with construction and everything. The, the point is, when you look at the main, now in here I have a stack of doubles and I have a stack of employees. Potatoes, potatoes. It works, so Larry Burns, Carl Carson, Frank James, and Homer Simpson is going to be pushed in, and it's going to be all popped out in, in reverse order. And they all work the exact same way. So if I do something like this, the outcome is going to be that. Are we OK? That's the output. So because uh, Homer Simpson was pushed in last, it pops out first. OK? It's just the stack of employees. Are we OK with this? Now, this is a stack. We have doubly linked lists. A stack is a one-way thing, as you saw. OK? If I want to actually go back and forth, that's not a good thing. What if I, as we mentioned, have a lineup like we had over here, when I want somebody to be inserted halfway through the queue? Let's say you have a series of things that they want to get printed. You don't want it to be unfair like this. You want first thing that came in to be first thing that came out. If you want to do something like that, then it's going to be a linked list, not a stack. A linked list looks like this. So you have a head and a tail. I'm not going to implement this. I'm just going to tell you what it is and then go directly to the code. OK? It has a head and a tail, and it works like this. So it has a head, it has a tail, OK? Which means you can go forward, and if you want to come back, you can always go back to head and come back back and forth. There's no top. It's a head and a tail that you're dealing with. And if, to make it possible to go back and forth, they make it a doubly linked list. So these are all next, correct? They actually add a previous. That points to the previous one. So you can go back and forth. And they usually have another pointer over here that they call it current, which is pointing to the one you're dealing with now. So you can say insert, and it inserts something between the two lines. So it actually inserts something in here like that. That points to the next, points to the previous, and this one points to that one, and that one points to So it actually, you can insert something halfway through. So you can do stuff like this. This double link list looks like this. Which one is this? This is the stack. Oh, this is the, I don't need to do, I'm going to put these things later. Let me remove this. Okay.
So it's your responsibility to go home and make this thing a template. This, what I have written, is a double link list of type uh, double. It's the exact same way as you see. It ha I'm calling it a queue. Okay? It has a data, next and previous, and the constructor, and a class Q is its friend. And look at all the functionalities that it has. You can have a queue of certain size. You can have a queue of certain size with uh, uh, the values to being set something. So you can say, I want 50 elements, and I want them all to be 20s. So it immediately creates those nodes for you and puts 20 in all of them. OK? You can copy or move a queue from one place to another. You have assignment operator to assign one queue to another, so essentially wipes out everything and sets the new one. You can see if it's empty or not. You can, using the index, it's going to actually start counting and go to the element that you want, so it can act like an array. It's not an efficient one. In a regular array, when you say, I want the 50th element, it knows what the address is, and it jumps right to it. With this, if you want the 50th element, it has to see the, what is the address of the beginning and keeps going to next 49 times until it gets to the one that you want. It's much more inefficient with speed. As I mentioned, the less amount of memory, you have to use your brain, therefore less speed. With uh, arrays, you have direct access. With this, it has to search for it somehow. Okay. You can see what is sitting at front. You can see what is sitting in front in a constant way. Instead, in, in case you want to pass this thing to a constant function and just print the value, it can see what is at the back. So what, oops. So what is in front essentially means what is the head node over there. What is on the back means what is the tail node over there. OK? Uh, you can say push back. It means put something at the back. So it's going to actually add something after the tail. Okay? You can say pop back. It means take the last one out. You can say push front or push or, uh, or pop front to take stuff from the beginning of, the, of it. You can say clear to completely take it out of it and, and stuff like that. So all the things that you see over here, I wrote the code for you so it actually runs so you can actually see how it's created. Go through it one by one and see exactly how I did it. Okay? It's a very simple thing, and I went through it. It's, it's written completely so you know how it works. Convert it to a template. See how it, see if you can do it. Yes? So it's, it's the same as the stack? But it's, a double, it's called a doubly linked list because it's two-sided. It, it, stack is a linked list that you only have access to its top. Double link, uh, a queue is a linked list that it is exactly like a stack, but you have access to the head and the tail. You always remove from the tail. You push always on the head. It's the lineup that you have at Tim Hortons. That's a linked list. A doubly linked list is where you can go back and forth into a linked list, which means you can go to next node, but if you want, you can come back. In a regular linked list, you can only go forward. If you want to come back, you have to jump to head and then walk all the way through again. Okay, it's exact. It's it's the exact same thing. It, like it, these, I, I ju I ju I've just written this for you to walk through it, and the, the code is written over here for you too, so you can actually s like test it with different things and he see how it works, um, and walk through it and, and and see how it works, and convert it to a template and find the challenges with that. Okay. After you have done this, then you're gonna appreciate this. Oh, well, not that one. You're going to appreciate, you're going to appreciate This. Before doing that, let me tell you what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> Sequential containers. All you have seen, people used to do it manually. Like I remember, I'm that old, that I used to write these things to be able to use it. Okay? 
But then they added all these things to the standard template library, which means every single data structure that you can think of, there is one copy of it in standard library written in the most efficient way. What is an array? Array is an encapsulation of regular array, but done in a class. So it knows its size. It knows it's, it's contiguous, which means it, 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 like a regular thing, it needs the whole thing. You cannot resize it. It has the zigzag signs that are always had. You can access its elements. You can do, but you know what the size is, uh, and uh, uh, it's used that way. Vector is an array. Again, it's, it's contiguous, but, when, but you can add elements to it. We have written this thing already, I think. I created an array that ch changed its size, right? So it's that one, converted to a template. It's that one, which much more, much better uh, uh, efficiency in memory management, and I'll tell you why. DEC, or DQ, okay, is uh, an abstract. It can be implemented in many different ways. Okay, so essentially it can be, uh, it's the storage of variable size. Uh, it can be implemented with a double linked list. It can be implemented with an array, depending on how it's going to be. That's essentially what it is. Uh, a forward list, uh, uh, it's a singly list. It's, so, uh, the, it's not a double linked list. It's a single linked list, the way I told you. So it's implemented that way. And a list is a double linked list, as I showed you. So these are all there. And their methods, on purpose, I wrote my methods with the exact same name of these. So if you go through that queue that I have written, you will know exactly what these things do. OK? So when I'm saying vector n, it actually creates an array, a queue, with n elements. You can create a vector n and set the template to be set to something. It's going to set the values of every data in the vector to all those elements. You can uh, <clears throat> set copy an, a vector into another one. It, you can assign it. You can see what is its size, what is its capacity. Capacity and size are usually the same, but in theory, capacity is always more than size. To make, I'll tell you why. To make the capacity and size to actually, if I want to resize a piece of array and I want to add one element, and if I have 10,000 things in there, if I want to add one element, I have to allocate 10,001, copy all the 10,000, and have one element extra and delete the old one, right? Isn't it easier? When you add one, I just add 10 just in case. So when you add more, I'm just going to add that 9 that I have right now until it gets to the next 10. It's easier, right? So instead of reallocating and resizing every single time, I reallocate and resize every 10 times. If I do that, then capacity will be 10,010, but your size will be 10,001. Capacity is the temporary storage that you have that you can grow up to with much higher speed. It's memory efficiency. Try it, see 90% of the time you get the same size. I don't know, like, that's, in theory, that's what it is, and that's what I explain. explain. Operator, that one. Yeah, so this uh, operator, uh, the index operator, and at, this is just the function version of this one, potatoes, potatoes, okay? At is that one. Uh, uh, so if you want to actually access the array that it created to implement all this, you can use the data to actually get the address of the array because everything is based with uh, like, like an array. It's a contiguous thing. Because of that, it's an array. And again, it has pu pushback, popback, uh, see what is in front and all the things you can actually do with this thing. If you look at a vector, uh, this is the uh, implementation code for vector, and I have it over here. I just copied it. I'm just going to put it over here so you can see. Um, <clears throat> so this is a vector being used like a, as you see. So 
Essentially, I say create a vector of double with 10,000 things in it. I wanted to check and see if the capacity is going to work. Uh, so the size ca always came first, uh, the same. So I'm going to remove that. I'm just going to create an uh, empty vector of prices. One by one, I'm going to push values to the back. Then I'm going to show it what it is. Then I'm going to set the front one to a value, pop back another one, show it again, and this is what happens. So if go home, play with it, and you'll see how it is. It's much more efficient to use a vector than you are used when you're using an, instead of using an array. Okay? A vector of integers instead of an array of integers. Okay? Uh, or even worse, instead of real C array of integers. Okay? When I say array, I actually meant STL array. I said it's efficient, more efficient to use the vectors if you have uh, memory resizing to be done. Yes? Stack, you, I don't think you're going to be using stack anytime soon. When you need a stack, it means you're making 120,000 a year. So <laughs> that's, very, that's hardcore stuff to do. I don't think you're going to need a stack anytime soon. Yeah, vectors and stuff, always use it right now. Anytime you want to use a, a collection of things, use the STL from now on. Don't use the original things anymore. It's more efficient. Use all these things instead. Then you don't need to, like if you want to have an array and you think it's going to get resized, you want to actually sit over there and resize an array, do memory management? No. Create a vector, it does it for you. Easy breezy. Right? That's much easier. Uh, the next thing over here is the DAC, DQ. It works the same way. All right? Uh, as you see, I create a DQ, and I have these two values in it, uh, and another one, so you can actually set one to another, push in, pop out, and do all those things, push in front, push in back, and, and do all this stuff. So how the DQ works, again, all the uh, things are written in here. Uh, the only two extra things that you see is push in front and push uh, pop, pop from front. So essentially, you can add to the head and the tail. If you want to, if you want to use a lineup, a car wash simulator, deck is a good thing to use because you can push in front and pop up the back. So you can actually have the first thing, first out scenario over here. And the next thing over here, exactly the same. Uh, list. List uh, uh, is essentially uh, a double link list. Okay, that we so underlying thing is actually a double link list. Um, but it works with an iterator that you're going to see what it is soon, okay? <clears throat> I'll tell you what an iter iterator is. Um, <clears throat> uh, everything that you can think of in, with respect of linked lists that you have can't be implemented with these. But if you want to put a cap around it and have a stack, there are adapters to do that. Stack is one of them. So the stack that I have written, voila. You can actually use this one. This uses a list underlay to do whatever you are doing. That's why they are called adapters. Okay? So you can use a stack or you can use a queue. So these are actually using those containers to implement a data structure standard queue or a data structure standard stack. And it works exactly the same way that I mentioned over there. Go through them. Uh, Iterators is the, uh, the last thing that I'm going to talk about, then I'm going to run. Remember that I told you there is a current over here usually that you can actually deal with? Remember I told you there is a current thing that you can say, which one? That's an iterator. Iterator is essentially uh, a reference to a specific, the handler for a specific uh, item in a, uh, in a list. And how it works is pretty simple. You create an iterator of the type of the thing that you have. So if I want to have a vector of employees, you write vector employee iterator i. Now this i can point to every element in here. And you can use a loop exactly like you've used the regular loop for it. So the plus plus operator is overloaded for an iterator. 
when you do plus plus, essentially it means jump to the next one. There is no plus equal to, you cannot jump twice. If you want to go jump twice, you have to put it in a loop and do plus plus twice. But that's what happens. So you are essentially saying you call the begin function of the, uh, of the list, which essentially means uh, give me the iterator for the first one, and you keep the reference inside the i, and as soon as you do plus plus, that i is going to point to every element one by one, it's going to increase. So i at the beginning is the first one. The first loop that passes it becomes the second one. Then it becomes the third one. Then it, so essentially points to individuals, and you can go back and forth in it. Um, the code is up there. You, you can actually see it. Um, let me just uh, bring one up over here for you to see. So, there you go. So, if I do this, you will see that this i one by one is going to print the values of the of the vector here. All right. So if I start this, as you see, the vector is created. I'm pushing at the back one by one. Then I'm going to say start from the beginning, go to the end. So i is beginning now. As soon as it prints, the first one comes out. Then i went, goes one further. And now i points to the next one. And now i points to the next one. So one by one, it points to the, to the elements. You, get, you extract its address. It's going to be the address of that one. You extract this reference, it's going to be reference of that one. So essentially, it becomes that one. <coughs> You're talking about this endo? No, no, oh, yeah. You're saying, you say, if you are not, if this iterator is not equal to the last iterator, so if you say prices, you can start from n and do i minus minus and come back if you want to. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, so it essentially checks to see if this iterator is equal to the last one. If it's really equal to the last one, then stop. All right? Are we okay with this? And you, have to, you have to write the code for it. If you don't write the code, it's not going to work out. You have to write the code for it. Um, and I think I actually... Uh, created the, the thing with the employee in here just to show you how it works. Let me bring it up. So you see that uh, these are all the same. Let me see if I have it. Uh. <clears throat> So yeah, this is all. Oh, this is how to OK. Uh, so uh, if you look at the let's stop that. <clears throat> My apologies, I have to stop this. OK. So, uh, yeah, well, you can insert, and it insert as at, at a position that the iterator is now pointing to, so it's going to insert over there. If you want to insert halfway through something, you don't have to resize it. It just inserts it into it, and that's why it's a good thing to use. Uh, you can insert the pos uh, uh, 50 times at some place, um, and uh, uh, from range of this to that, so you can... You can uh, take a look at all these things one by one, and that examples are written. It's very simple and straightforward. Uh, just go through it and see how it works and come with questions the next time. There is nothing I can show other than walk through the code that is there already, so I don't want to waste your time on that. Um, and, and that's it. So uh, again, walk through the code. I, I put all these code inside uh, uh, the notes, and I'm going to post it up. Please, if you don't do it, you won't learn it, okay? Sit, spend half an hour, not much, more. Half an hour, 45 minutes, go through this code, fiddle with it, add few elements, take it out. The classes that you have written already, 
push those classes in and pop it out to see if it actually works with, with objects, with compound objects, and not only uh, primitive values. It actually works with anything. That's the beautiful thing about templates. When you are creating a vector, you can create a vector of cars if you want to. All right? Um, and that's it. Have yourself a beautiful day.